Hey folks, welcome back. This is the dollar index, and this is the order block I outlined last night in our video. So this was the anticipated reaction I mentioned last night. I wanted to see some kind of a support found in there. Uh, we have the range, okay, split. So you have the middle of that highlighted here, and we'll look at this in the lower time frame. I just want to apologize in advance. Uh, the Lord <laughs> is unleashing heaven. <laughs> Well, in our uh, area here, we're having a really bad thunderstorm, so you may hear some booms and such. Uh, if I don't do the video now, I won't be able to meet the, the window I've set up for today by 5 o'clock. So just, again, I'm sorry if you hear that in the background, but it is what it is. I don't have any say-so over what he's doing up there. <laughs> All right, so let's go down to a lower time frame real quick and drop into that 15-minute time frame. Dial out just a little bit. Okay, so here's that consequent encouragement of the wick inside that order block. Beautifully hits it to the pip and even pipette. And we have a run higher. Now I'm going to clean this up a bit and show you with the 15 minute time frame. You can see we have a swing high after hitting that consequent encouragement on the bullish order block relative to the daily chart. It hits it here, and then we have a break in market structure. I'm using this swing high here. You could have elected to use this swing higher. It doesn't make a difference. Nonetheless, I like to use a nice defined swing high when I'm looking for a break on the upside. It just so happens this candle does, in fact, break both. This is enough for me after hitting a key level. Now, remember, the key level is derived from that daily chart. I want you to take a look at... the IPTA rebalance macro. All right, so we're gonna take a look at this movement in here and we'll drop down to a five minute chart. And we're gonna look at this run here. We're gonna look at this price rally here inside of one single five minute candle. Price expands from the 96.44 to 96.59. When we look at fair value gaps, uh, BISI, SIBI, uh, uh, things of this nature, liquidity, voids, anything that constitutes an imbalance, uh, what does that really mean and how is it beneficial to us to look for them? When we get key levels off of a monthly, weekly, daily, or four hour, we can anticipate these low resistance liquidity runs to form, but when they form, they leave porous wakes in the back. So this is an area where we have a candle here and the candle here that creates a fair value gap. The price comes back down and rebalances right to the pip. The high on this candle comes in at 96.44. The low on this candle comes in at 96.44, a perfect rebalancing. So that's what IPTA does. It's macro. The price engine that creates the uh, delivery of price is, like I said, I, I'm, I've named it the interbank price delivery algorithm. It doesn't go by that name, obviously, in reality, but the way for me to communicate it to you uh, is to name it as such because that's how I originally internalized it when I started breaking all these things down, looking for specific signatures. I want to break this down into a one minute chart. Okay, so that same low resistance liquidity run is now shown in the form of one, two, three, four minutes. So, in the scope of four minutes, price did a run from 96.44 to 96.59. So, we had a run of Not sure if you heard that, but that was very loud here. <laughs> so we had uh, a price run covering this range in terms of pips. The delivery from this candle's high from here all the way up to here, this was all single one minute. What we look for is when we have these real quick displacements in price action, 
where there is a defined range at which the market did not offer enough time and or the ability to trade at these price levels. Now it's commonly banded about that price is an auction market and to some degree it is. On the buy side it, it tends to be but not in entirely. It's like this for instance if we were seeing price run to 96.44 and say you were the auctioneer, you're the person that sits up there and barks, okay who wants to buy this dollar at 96.44? Someone raises their little thing up to notify the auctioneer that they're interested in paying 96.44 so they get a, a, a bid at 96.44. Then the auctioneer, because his job is to get as much money as he can for the item, He'll say, okay, do I have uh, 96.45? Anybody got 96.45? 96.45, and he looks around the crowd and waits for someone to signal to him that, yes, they would pay 96.45. And he'll keep doing this, keep going higher and higher and higher and higher and higher until no one is willing to pay a higher bid. So the last highest bid, that person takes ownership of it for that price. That's a standard auction theory. What makes it too myopic is that's assuming that there's only one dollar. There's a limitless supply of currency. So what IPTA's job is and its role is when price starts to show a displacement and IPTA has a quick rebalance to a higher price point in one candle we move all of this range. Now in the grand scope it's not a lot of pips okay but it is a displacement and it does create an imbalance. This is a busy, so it's a buy side imbalance, too much movement on the upside, and it's a sell side inefficiency. So buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiency. The context of what this is, it's a fair, it creates a fair value gap. But we have to break this down further to understand why, what is it that we're looking for and why is price needing to come back down? So in this shaded area, I'm gonna show you. Here, this whole price range is too much of the buy side and not enough time and opportunity to trade at 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50 because price moved too fast. In one single one minute candle, price expanded higher up to this price point and closed. At one point, it had traded all the way up to 96.54. The next candle we opened down at 96.51, trade down to 96.50 and a half, and then closes after making a high almost at 96.57 here. We trade to 96.56 and a half, but close at 96.54, I'm sorry, 96.53. The next candle here opens, trade down initially, about a half a pip, and then we rally up to 96. 56 and then close at 95.56. So between this range low on this candle and this candle's high, price has spent time going back and forth. So this is efficiently traded. That's why we don't see any real quick movement here until we get down into this price point here. Now, it, it may be subjective in the way that I said that, but trust me, the quick movement occurs once we get below this candle's low right in here, that's where the speed starts coming in. The next candle we open, trade higher, then we rebalance to the last up close candle. That's our bearish order block. IPTA will then move lower, seeking to fill in all of this range. Because unlike an auction where once the higher bid is formed and a participant is willing to pay that higher bid price, they don't want to come back down to a lower price, but because there's a limitless supply of currency or a market asset, in theory, uh, because obviously in stocks there's, are, there is a finite number of shares, but when you really look at it, eventually they can split and create more shares. So I guess in the same sense that it could be a limitless, again, in theory. But for currency, it is absolutely limitless. So the central bank, the algorithm at the central banks rather, will go lower and offer they didn't get much time spent at 96.50 to 96.44 so if they will come down to those price levels and stay there for a little bit to offer smart money at the banks to place trades at that 
area and then at price. Notice how when it hits this price level here, it's completely rebalanced. The high of the candle again, 96.44. The low on this candle is 96.44. So this is a complete balanced low resistance liquidity run. Now we are now free to trade higher and there's no reason for it to come back down to this level at this time once it starts to trade higher. Price starts to rally up, trades into the old high. We have a rejection block at 96.55 and five pit bets and the high on this candle here, if I can get the pop up. I hate when it does this. Well, we're just going to have to go with it being 96.55 and a half on the basis of it's close enough to call it that. And then price trades back down. We have a volume imbalance in here. And then we have the last two down closed candles creating an order block. Price trades down exactly to 96.47. So again, we have another opportunity where a fair value gap exists from this candle's high and this candle's low. So there's a fair value gap right in here. And it also allows it to trade back to 96.47. It does so here. And then price again starts to rally higher. Liquidity rests above this old high. IPTA will seek to trade back to that price point. Short traders may have looked at this and said, okay, I'm going to go short. And there would be liquidity back there. So price will make a low resistance liquidity run to that price point here. The liquidity pool is now purged. And then price starts to gravitate and move higher. Inside of these areas here, we can do the consequent encroachment on the fair value gaps and or use the institutional order flow entry drill low-hanging fruit entry uh, technique that I taught you a couple months ago for doing your walk forward and your back testing for fair value gaps. If you look at what has transpired since we had a nice little rally up trading up into 96.60 was that 69? Uh, yeah 68 96.68 and then moving higher up to a high of 96.73 and that's where we're at at the moment. Now I'm going to go back out to a daily and take all this off and go to a default clean chart. Okay, and that order block from the open to the high, that's exactly what I mapped out last night with you real time as I was doing the video. Price stabbed down into that. I said we would look for a reaction there, find some kind of support. At the time, that hits that price point okay when it does that it's important to note that we would be looking for as I mentioned last night in the video that we would look for a correlated pair SMT divergence between euro and cable and that would give us a, a counter trend idea for instance if we think that the dollar index is going to be bullish at this price point that would be a sell scenario for euro and cable so let's go over to a 15 minute chart and we'll add some details okay so here's that five minute chart on the dollar index instead daily order block and the consequent encroachment price creates that market shift here breaking this high and we have the fair value gap existing between here and here midpoint or consequent encroachment of the gap trades down to it there's an entry point there if price rallies from there we have a, a strong confluence we have a key level from the daily chart showing a willingness to show displacement a fair value gap exists so we can see price trading down into that would be an ideal scenario to go long that would also support the idea of a bearish foreign currency trade either in euro or cable creates another fair value gap in here split that in half it does a little bit more than that it actually fills and goes beyond that just a little bit more almost into the consequent encroachment of this wicks high to the open another opportunity you can trade there either one doesn't make a difference if you traded that one or this level here because your stop would be below here as you would have entered here also on the previous one your stop would be below this level now we're not trading the dollar index but we're looking at it with the interpretation that if we were trading it, it would be bullish, as I outlined last night in the video. We have another fair value gap in here, okay, using the 
institutional order flow, low hanging fruit entry technique. That means trading back to this low. That's all that's necessary. Go long and price has shown a willingness to want to do that. Now let's transpose all these ideas over to the foreign currency market. Here is euro dollar trading up into that same moment at the time. Again, on this candle here, these are five minute chart candles. So around the uh, 12, 1200 mark. And here's 11 to 12. You can see euro dollar is making a higher high. Same time, cable is not making a higher high. It's unwilling to make a higher high there. So we have that SMT divergence at the same time that we're seeing the dollar index hit our key level. Now, if we go into the British pound on the daily chart here, I want you to zoom in here with me. All right, and then we're going to look at I don't want to do that. We have a fair value gap, complete closure here. Right there. Fair value gap, complete closure. Now I'm going to drop into a 15 minute time frame. And here we are, we have price trading up into that. It should have been uh, 25. Uh, what is that level? <laughs> well, I just put it in there. That's it's daily. It's the daily level that closes the fair value gap on the daily chart. I took both sides of the marketplace. I was waiting for the dollar index to trade down into that daily bullish order block, which would constitute a rally in foreign currency and I was focusing on cable with the expectation it would trade up into that mid figure 125.50 level. I looked for a sell scenario to support a bearish uh, decline in cable after the dollar index hit its bullish order block relative to its daily chart. So I'm going to put some notes on here real quick and make it quicker. And this is what I saw and everything has been interpreted here. So I used central bank dealers range here and I did the uh, expansions on the upside giving me 125.70 and one pipette. Yeah, the actual high came in today at uh, 25.70 and eight pipettes. So I was only off by seven pipettes. So about a half a pip. Not bad. Uh, the 125.67.9 level now it's calibrated because it's set to a template. Uh, these levels were already put in for the template for the purpose of populating the chart quickly. You can see that that's that daily fair value gap being closed. And we had the SMT divergence, correlated pair SMT divergence between euro and cable. In other words, euro dollar versus the British pound versus dollar. Uh, we had that SMT divergence as I noted here. Higher high in euro, lower high in cable. At the same time, the dollar index was slamming into its bullish order block relative to its daily chart. Going back to our example here, we have a fair value gap in here, trading in London. Price hits, it goes a little bit beyond it, that's fine, it doesn't make a difference. Going long in here, expansion on the upside, and the fill was 125.313, that's what that level is den uh, denoting over in here. And I went short after taking my profits and out, my entries and where I got out at are actually going to show, be shown on the forum. So it'll be below the post of this entry. Okay, so we had a fair value gap here. Price trades up into it. I sold short as it was rallying up into the fair value gap. My fill was 125.51 and 8 pipettes. And the price comes all the way back up to 25, 56, and 9 pipettes. So I had about, what was that, five, 5 pips drawdown. Not bad. Again, using the low hanging fruit entry opportunity. I don't want to try to be perfect up here. I mean, I get that. So I want to sell short as it's trading up into it. And I was looking for the institutional level 125.20. As my objective, and that was my limit order to get out at. 
And a couple of things over here, we have a fair value gap to reach for, and we have the low here at 25.22, and 10 pips below that would be 12, 25.12. It's what's being delineated with this line here, and it's also at the bottom of the fair value gap as well. So as price is trading down to 25.20, I know that these levels in here could be fairly easily reached, but again, I want to be getting out as the market's moving in my favor. So the institutional 20 level is in my elected cover point, and it allowed me to do so as it was trading down here. Did I get to very, very low? No, I didn't need it. I don't care. I'm trading from one institutional price point, which is the 2550 level, the 2520, the 2530 level essentially to 2550 level. 20 pips, 35 pips, 55 pips or so for the day. Thank you very much. Wham, bam, thank you. Bam, I'm out of here. And it was all done with 12 pip stop losses. So the things that I outlined last night and the things that you're learning in the mentorship is exactly what's being shown here, and I executed on it with those things in mind. Now, does that mean I'm here beating my chest, saying look how smart I am? No. I still don't have a strong feel on what's going on in the marketplace from a higher time frame. I don't know yet. I don't need to know that right now. I can still find setups and still hit my weekly objective. That's what I'm trying to illustrate here. I'm not trying to communicate to you on a day-by-day -day basis or weekly basis that you have to know everything from a higher time frame in, in order to find trades. You can find trades. You can look for things, but you have to understand liquidity. Looking for a higher time frame movement, if you're looking from a daily or a four hour, you can get intraday volatility to offer moves like this if you just play the institutional levels, the 50s, the 20s, the big figures, and the 80s. It, it's not important to know everything. And some of you are putting way too much pressure on yourself to try to know everything. That was our power just going out. <laughs> okay, so our power just went out. <laughs> so I apologize for that. You're probably going to hear that a couple times until I close this video out. Just so you know, um, this is what you get when you combine everything with a higher time frame key level. And as I indicated, that we would see some measure of a bounce or should have looked for a bounce at some point at that bullish order block on the daily chart, USDX. Uh, this was the framework for that. Fair value gap to fair value gap. Fair value gap to fair value gap. Institutional orders around these key levels. Again, 30 is a nice level, nice 10 level. 50 is a nice level, and 20 is a nice level. And all I did was work within the scope of that to get this. Okay, And it's also, if you look at it, it's a market maker sell model. We have the original consolidation, price rail rise away, reaccumulation, Smart money reversal, low risk sell, distribution, that's where my entry was. And then we have another area here where it should, in my mind, uh, offer a level of distribution and run for the lows here for the day. And I think that will be the outcome for tonight. Maybe going into Asia and we'll see. And that's going to be it for tonight. Hopefully you found this insightful. Hopefully you understand a little bit better why the imbalances need to be filled and how it is precise when you understand what you're looking for. And also the importance of having a higher time frame level to watch for for a reaction. Until I talk to you Saturday with the weekly review, I wish you good luck and good trading.